Welcome to the show, The Devil's Work Exposed. This series will expose and reveal the countless ways the devil works on planet Earth, in our homes, in our governments, in our institutions, and yes, you may be deceived yourself. This show will equip you to discern the devil's lies, to learn his strategies, tactics, and schemes, and most importantly, to defeat him. My name is Hal Leith, and I want to welcome you to our first show called The Devil's Work Exposed. We get our title from the passage in the scripture, 1 John 3, 8. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. I want you to notice carefully that Jesus came for a purpose. The purpose is to destroy the works of the devil. So what are the works of the devil? Do you know? On this show, we are going to reveal satanic works and therefore equip you to fight the powers of darkness. Our topic today will be the titles of the devil. The first title I want to talk about is Satan. That word means adversary, hater, opponent, and enemy. The next one would be called the devil. means accuser, slanderer, whisperer, slanders God to man and man to God. The next one is serpent, enchanter, beguiler, speaker of subtlety and wisdom, perverted to evil ends. The next title is dragon, the great enchanting serpent, speaks of the vicious, beastly nature and rage of Satan. The next title here would be Beelzebub, Prince of the Devils, derived from Beelzebub or Lord of the Flies, God of the Dunghill. This was a heathen god believed to be ruler of all evil spirits. Okay, then comes the God of this age. This age is full of death, destruction, sin. No wonder he's called the God of this age, little g-god. Prince of this world, same basic Same basic title. And then Prince of the Power of the Air. That's in Ephesians 2.2 and also Ephesians 6.12. Lucifer means day star, morning star, light bearer, and shining one. And the next title we have here is Belial, which means worthless, perverse, lawless. He has a title just basically called The Enemy. And the enemy hates, and the enemy brings opposition and hostility. The next title would be the tempter. He's the one that entices us. He tempts us with evil. The next title is the wicked one, then the angel of light, then the accuser of the brethren, the antichrist, the adversary, murderer, liar, sinner, roaring lion, wolf, thief, wicked one, fowler, one out to entrap and ensnare, the king of the kingdom, If you look carefully at Matthew 12, 26 through 29, you will see that he has a kingdom. That means he's got dominion and he rules in certain realms. The next one would be the angel of the bottomless pit, Revelation 9, verse 11. The next one would be Leviathan. In Isaiah 27, 1, it talks about the great water animal. But this is in the spirit realm. You have to understand that sometimes terms and titles of this creature, this demonic power, are just that. They're terms to point to a spiritual reality. The next title we're going to talk about is the son of perdition. Actually, the son of perdition. Perdition means utter loss. It means utter destruction. Now that we see those titles and we understand his nature, let's look at the reality of his kingdom. Satan's kingdom is a kingdom of darkness, a kingdom of sin and unrighteousness, a kingdom of sickness and disease, a kingdom of deception, a kingdom of sorrow and death. God's kingdom, on the other hand, is a kingdom of light, a kingdom of holiness and righteousness, a kingdom of healing and health, a kingdom of truth, a kingdom of joy and life. Now, I want you to know worldwide today, there's a tremendous increase of activity in the satanic realm. Uh, Much of the rise of the occult, spiritism, Satanism, New Age, and all kinds of false cults are evidences of this rise. The Bible calls Satan's kingdom a kingdom, which means the dominion of a king or a ruler. 
And the word domain comes from that. So the word domain refers to the rule, the reign, the territory over which a king rules. And the domain of the kingdom of darkness is wherever Satan exercises his dominion. Now look at these following references I'm going to give you that describe his domain. It is called Satan's kingdom in Matthew 12, 25 through 26, and also Luke 11, verses 14 through 19. It is called a kingdom of darkness in Colossians 1, verses 13 and 14, and in Revelation 16, 10. It influences the kingdoms of this world's system. That's Luke 4, verses 5 and 6, Revelation 11, 15. It influences the world kingdoms from the atmospheric heavens or heavenly places. Ephesians 2, 2, Ephesians 3, 10, Ephesians 6, 12, and Revelations 12. It is diametrically opposed to the kingdom of God in nature, character, and purpose. It is essential to recognize that the extent of Satan's kingdom is limited by God. These are not two equal kingdoms. God is unlimited. Satan is a created being that is limited. He cannot exercise authority where God does not allow. Satan is a real personality. He is evil personified, and characteristics are ascribed to him. Satan is not an impersonal influence or power or some darkness you may feel. The word gives Satan personal pronouns, intelligence, and knowledge. Will and action are attributed to him. In Job 1.8, in Job 2, 1-2, in Zechariah 3, 1, 2 Corinthians 2.11, and on and on. So Satan is a spirit being, even as angels are spirit beings, even as God is a spirit being, so is Satan. He is a created being, therefore totally dependent upon God for his very existence. In Ezekiel 28, verses 13 and 15, you will find that. He was called Lucifer, which means day star, son of the morning, or light bearer, in Isaiah 14, 12. And notice, combine that with 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. He was an anointed cherub in the heavenly sanctuary, just as Old Testament prophets, priests, and kings were anointed for office. He also held an office. He was the covering cherub placed by God to cover the throne. Compare this with the cherubim on the Ark of the Covenant in the tabernacle of Moses, covering the mercy seat. He was in Eden, the garden of God, Ezekiel 28, 13. He was in in the holy mountain or kingdom of God, in the sides of the north. That's Ezekiel 28, verse 14 and 16. And look also at Psalm 48, 1. He was perfect in the day he was created, Ezekiel 28. He was full of wisdom. He was perfect in beauty. He was decked with precious stones set in gold, very similar to the stones in the breastplate of Aaron, Israel's high priest. Look carefully at Ezekiel 28, 13. Combine that with Exodus 28, verses 15 through 21. He was created with music in his being, apparently being the leader of heaven's worship team. Ezekiel 28, 13. He was once in the truth, but fell away. He was lifted up in pride. He was lifted up in pride over his God-given wisdom and talents. God gave him anointing and beauty, Ezekiel 28, 17. And he exalted himself and came under condemnation. He manifested self-will against the creator God. He manifested self-will against God's will. And if you look at Isaiah 14, verses 13 through 15, I want you to note the five I wills of Lucifer's ambition. Look at this. I will ascend into heaven. Well, that's a self-will, totally. I will exalt my throne above the stars of heaven. That's self-exaltation. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. That's self-enthronement. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Self-ascension. I will be like the Most High. Self-deification. Turning himself into God. And he fell through pride and self-will, the very essence of sin. He wanted to be independent from God, and he rebelled against God. He fell as lightning. Jesus saw him fall like lightning. Luke 10, verse 18. And compare that with 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. 14. 
He was also cast down by God in his self-deification. He was the original sinner, and iniquity, the lawlessness, was found in him. Isaiah chapter 14, let's start at verse 12. How you were fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you were cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, here we go, five I wills. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Verse 15, down to verse 15 says, Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Now, I want you to know God has five I wills against Satan in the scriptures. Ezekiel 28, let's begin at verse um, 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covers. I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. You were perfect in thy ways from the day that you were created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, listen to this, therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. The next I will, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by the reason of brightness. Here's another I will. I will cast thee to the ground. Here's another one. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. You have defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the traffic and the iniquity thereof. Therefore, I will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes in the sight of all them that behold thee. So, in ending here, we're going to let you know that the next podcast, which would be The Devil's Work Exposed Part 2, will be coming up soon. I want you to know, too, that the only way to overcome the wicked one, the devil, Satan, the dragon, is to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ right now. To learn his word to learn the power of the Holy Spirit, to learn about the gospel, which is written in the Holy Scriptures. So instead of just having you say a prayer right now, I'm going to encourage you to say your own prayer, maybe tonight, and maybe you need him right now. Go ahead and pray right now. But I'm letting you know that there's only one way to the Father. is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and only one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father but by me. I'm going to say goodbye. This is Hal Leith signing off, and we hope you contact us. We're going to take some calls from my friends in the next show. Have a great day, and be blessed. You can contact us at H-A-L-L-E-A-T-H at gmail.com. That's Hal Leith, one word, at gmail.com. You can also send in your questions with voicemails to that email. Have a great day.